All right. Um, I want to go talk to Father Thomas because I think he did it. And I could have done it as well. Well, Andreas, what have you come back to? This is all awful, just awful. I should never have allowed Klaus to publish the 12 articles. This is what happens when common people get agitated by reading nonsense. Nonsense? Is that what you think of the 12 articles? I spoke rashly. There is merit to the fundament of the 12 articles, of course. There's even merit to the ideas of Martin Luther, but I'm not about to advocate that. The peasantry read his works. These pamphlets, these books, can make people crazed, furious. Sister Amelie and I have seen what happens when a good people become part of a mob. Here in Tassing? Thankfully, no. It was much earlier. Before we came to Tassing, I was the priest at a town near, Bened near Benedictine Covenant Convent. The town was full of good people. I don't know why I started doing his voice as Owen Wilson just now. Why did I do that? What was his accent? How was I voicing him before? I guess it's just Owen Wilson now. But the good people were whipped into a panic by the educated neighbor, the town doctor. He had read the Malleus Maleficarum. We already read about this. The Hammer of Witches, a treatise on witchcraft published by Spire in 1486. Theologians at the University of Cologne condemned the book as unethical and not in line with Catholic doctrine. Despite this, the book was enjoy has enjoyed widespread popularity. The Witch Hunting Manual. The author was driven out of Innsbruck, wasn't he? Yes, though word of that had not reached our doctor. One thing the book's author and doctor shared was a contempt for, for and hatred of women. In the convent, the doctor saw a coven of witches. In Sister Amelie, he saw not a mystic, but a woman possessed by evil spirits, speaking blasphemy. Be surely the local magistrate, or but surely the local magistrate didn't believe that. Huh. No, he did not, but that didn't matter. The doctor inflamed his neighbor's fears. No matter what I did, no matter what I said, it made no difference. They wouldn't listen to reason. They wouldn't even have, to they wouldn't even listen to scripture. In the dead of night, they gathered at the convent and set fire to it. Sister Amelie was lucky to escape with her life. The rest of the nuns were not as fortunate. This seems like a villain origin story. This seems like a villain origin story. You're not making it easy on yourself, to, uh, Father Thomas. I think you did it. But I'm all too aware of what can happen when a mob forms. Should have known it would happen again. This is my fault. You'd think that Otto's death would have shocked the farmers into abandoning, abandoning a hopeless cause. Is that what you thought, Father Thomas? Hmm? Is it? It's only inflamed them. It should have never come to this. The abbot should have known he was playing with fire. And what about Otto and Peter? What about Klaus? Shouldn't they have known? Peasants are being butchered all over Swabia. Oh, I just want this all to stop before it gets any worse. I suppose there's no good fretting about what's already happened. I have to minister to the people of the town as best as I can, given the circumstances, and pray for the best. Speaking of which, I need to hear confessions from the townsfolk. It's a tassing tradition after St. John's Eve. In case they got up to any mischief, they can't wait until Easter. I expect they'll be coming in early this morning. If you could excuse me, I need to prepare. Of course, Father. I, uh... I really want... I really want to eavesdrop on that. Hello, uh... Forgive me, I've forgotten your name. Andreas Mahler, Master Artist. You must be Elsa Mueller in The Miller's Wife. Oh yes, that's me. My husband has been talking about your arrival. We're pleased you've done so well for yourself. He didn't seem so interested in me last time I was here. My husband, uh, he has a mind for business. I'm afraid your work in the scriptorium was not toward his interests. Odd, since I was running business last time I was here, I suppose he wouldn't have known. Forgive my husband, Master Mahler. I'm sure if he had known, things would have been different. Who is this young man? Casper, my apprentice. Hello, mistress. Oh, you must meet my darling Paul. He would love to meet someone his age pursuing art. Gay. They're gonna date now. 
Just not where Lenhart can see. I'm sure we can arrange that. That would be delightful, Master Mahler. Thank you both. You're most welcome, Else. I must now return to my work, Master Mahler, until later. Until then. Do I have to go inside the church to listen to the confessions? Ah, uh, yawned. Matilia. Andreas, enjoy the bonfire. Not as much as you did. <laughs> I enjoy Midsommar. A chance to remember the old ways. What are you doing back here anyway? I came to pay my respects to Brother Piero. Why? He can't hear you. He's gone. For my own sake, I suppose. All right, I understand that. Stupid, but I understand it. Can't imagine why anyone would come to Tassing unless they were desperate. Do you work for Father Thomas? Work for? I'm a slave. I clean his damned church and keep his house so I have a roof over my head. Oh, this, we already got this dialogue. Why is she repeating it? I understand. You don't, you can't, no matter. Do you know anything about Otto's murder? No, why would I, and why do you care? I'm just asking. You never know who might have seen or heard something. Well, I haven't, are we done? Yes, until later. Fine. Okay, that got us nowhere. What else is there for me to do now? Andreas, not looking good, is it? I warned you there'd be blood. Looks like only the beginning to me, too. So you did. Otto didn't deserve this. He was an honest man with a good cause. Nobody deserves to die like this. Best you get on solving this, Andreas. The unrest bodes ill. Peasants are about to do something foolish. Why haven't you told them about the secret entrance into the library? I don't always see eye to eye with Peter and the rest, but I don't want them all killed. If they got into the library, I don't even wish to imagine what they could do. Soldiers would strike back and there'd be a massacre in Tassing. I have no choice but to stop them. You didn't kill Otto, did you? No. That's not funny. Otto's got... Otto had a few conflicts, but nobody I'd call an enemy. Best of luck to you, Andreas. You don't have much time. Who can we even speak to right now? Andreas, how'd you get caught up in another murder? Maybe God wants me to solve murders instead of making art. Seems like a bad way to put food on the table, but maybe you're right. Listen, Andreas, I can't talk any sense into Peter. I understand he's angry, but we're all angry. We're threatening the abbot. Burning down the abbey, the Duke's soldiers will tear this town apart. I'm doing what I can, Endress. Thank you. I know Peter is mostly bluster, but just worried for all of us. I understand. I'll talk to you later, Endress. Until then. Willem says, uh, maybe track down Martin. That's the other thing I was going to do, was try to figure out where he was. Fabian, Johan... Brigitta. Ha, ah, Andreas. How are you feeling after that brawl? Looks like you escaped the worst of it. I didn't want to risk anything with that mercenary there. Oh, he's a tough one, that's for certain. You never know with those Lanskinecks. Most of them are just piss and beer. We just came across one of the real ones. Anyway, it's good to see you after all these years. i surprised you'd say that. Your parting words to me back then were hardly kind. Were they? It's been so long I don't remember. It was pretty rude. You told me to eat shit. Oh god, that's bad. I was such a little shit. Well, I'm sorry for being such an asshole back then. Nothing to feel bad about. It was a long time ago. What happened to you anyway? Oh, right. You know, I stole some of the Baron's things. I didn't make it far with them. 
I tried to sell them in Walgao and I got robbed. Serves me right, I guess. Luckily, they didn't find the coins I was carrying. The money carried me around Bavaria for another month and a half. Then I started stealing. I grew bigger and more confident over time and became a highwayman. You're lucky you didn't get killed. And that's what made me quit in the end. I had a partner for the last year of my adventures. We tried to rob some Italians. We thought they were merchants traveling under the banner of St. George. A second century Praetorian guard and patron saint of England, he is most well known for his legendary victory against a dragon. But they were soldiers guarding money from the bank of St. George in Genoa. Exactly. I learned that later. My partner didn't survive the encounter. I was wounded and alone in the wilderness. I thought of my father, my mother, Brigitta. I realized I couldn't remember Wolf's face anymore. I had to come back and take up the responsibilities I left behind. Was coming back difficult? It was. I felt like I'd stepped out of another life into this one. It took me a while to get used to everything. I remember how things used to be. That's all in the past now. I just need to look forward. Merton, who are you? What do you mean? Werner Stoll said you lost a scar. A big one. What? I got a scar when I was a kid. It got better. All right, let's stop this nonsense. You started it. I don't know what you're getting at. Why don't you just admit it? Because you're talking crazy. What's gotten into you, Andreas? Forget it. I don't have to stand here and listen to this. Just stay away from me, all right? All right, that didn't work. Andreas? Andreas Mahler? Hello, cat. Well, would you look at that? You are back in Tassing. And look at you. You've done well for yourself. And who's this? Cat, meet Casper, my apprentice. Hello. He's got the posture of an artist, that's for sure. St good, strong face, though. I do. What brings you back to Tassing, Andreas? Passing through on the way back to Nuremberg. I saw Martin earlier. I must say, I was surprised to see him. That's right, he disappeared when you were last in town. Franz passed a few years ago. Then Wolf. Brigitte and I le nearly lost the farm and our minds. But Martin returned shortly after, and he's proving proved to be a changed man. A good man. He saved us from destitution. Of course, the Abbey would have seized your land. Johan wished to buy it, to preserve it for Brigitte and I, but with the taxes being what they are. But we're lucky Martin returned. I do not wish the fate of Attilia Kemperin on any woman, least of all myself. Times may be hard in Tassing right now, but God truly does answer our prayers. I'm glad you and your family are well, Cat, despite everything. Thank you, Andreas. It truly is good to see you again, even in the midst of such terrible times. I did want to ask you more about your son, actually. Martin seems to have become a changed man since I last saw him, almost like he's a different person entirely. Ha! I don't know about that. Oh, but he st was still gone when he left Tassing, wasn't he? He returned several weeks later, like he always did. Was it his travels or time that changed him? Only God knows the pa the truth of a man's heart, but I suspect the challenges he faced on the road improved his memories of home. He hasn't stolen anything or run off in years. Truly, the Lord prov provides for his faithful. In Otto were arguing the other day, though. What do you, do you know why? Were they? I'm sorry, Andreas, but I don't know anything about that. Martin supports Otto in his cause against the abbot's taxes. He didn't have any ca cause to fight. Otto knew Martin wasn't who he said he was, Cat. Otto could have pressed him into supporting his cause. I knew Martin has changed, but for him to be a different man, that's absurd. After Franz died, God blessed me by returning my son to me, healed of his darkness. We should be giving thanks to that the Lord led Martin to the light. Trust me, Andreas, I know my own son. Martin would never do such a thing. Thank you for talking with me, Cat. Thank you for hearing me out. Until later, Andreas. Till then. Alright, so I confronted him too early. That's annoying that we can't go back to him with more info. Hello, Andreas. Could you spare a moment, Brigitta? I suppose. What do you need? It was so strange seeing Martin. What do you mean? Last time I was in Tassing, he ran off. Now he's back, and I don't recognize him. It's been seven years, Andreas. Everyone in Tassing has changed. Is that so bad? I just didn't expect it of Martin. He didn't get into an argument with o he did get into an argument with Otto when I was coming into town though. What happened there? Why all of the questions about my husband, Andreas?
I'm trying to catch up on everything that's changed in Tassin. You're a poor liar, Andreas. I'm looking for any reason someone might want to er mur murder Otto. Otto is pressing Martin to support him in the town commons, Andreas. Martin hasn't changed, or Martin has changed, but his history in this town is remembered. He doesn't want to cause more trouble. He didn't want to speak in the commons because he's afraid of the abbot. He squabbled over it, that's all. You're lying, Brigitte. I know the truth. Just come clean. I have no idea what you're talking about, and even if I did, I wouldn't help you accuse my cousin, my husband. Martin is a good man. Things have changed for us. Why can't you believe what that and leave us be? Otto's dead, Brigitte. If Martin felt threatened by Otto, then that's motive enough. Sometimes you really shouldn't meddle, Andreas. You'll ruin lives. Now, please, I need to get back to work. Of course, until later, Brigitte. I guess I just fumbled that completely. There's nothing we can do. What else is there to do right now? Uh, I wanted to speak to Leonard. Where is he? Where the fuck is Leonard? Where is Leonard? Isn't he in the... Uh, with the Rothus or whatever? The Rothaus? Where is that? Is that up here? Where is he? Who is this? Baltasar. Salutations. You must be that wonderful artist, no? Uh, I suppose. Who are you? Of course. Forgive me. Baltasar Isenkomf. At your service. But call me Baltas, please. It's much more familiar. Uh, pleasure, Baltas. Have, have you been in Tassing long? Oh, just a few seasons. My cart broke down, and I found the place so charming I decided to stay. I enjoy the quiet, but I must say... Uh, I do miss the company of other intellectuals. Usually that good Dr. Stolz and I whittled the hours away in the evenings. So naturally, when I heard a well-known artist had returned, I was beside myself. So you're an artist, then. What do you do, exactly? I'm, well, I'm an inventor of sorts. Really? What do you make? All sorts of things, young man. Mechanical clocks of all sizes, metal mice that skitter about, even light without flame. Truly impressive, Baltus. Thank you, Andreas. I knew a fellow artist such as yourself would appreciate my work. Say, that wonderful doctor, Werner, has invited me to dinner. Why don't you and your assistant come along? I'm sure he won't mind. Why not? I'd love to join you. Oh, thank God. I was worried I would have to figure out something to do and just be wandering around for hours. Ah, oh, Master Mahler, I see you'll be joining us. Baltus invited us. I but I don't want to impose. No, it's no imposition. Come, let us pray and begin our meal together. Bless us, O Lord, these gifts, uh, which we are about to receive from your bounty. Through Christ our Lord, amen. It's good to finally speak with you properly again after all these years, Master Mahler. Though I suppose I should have expected to see you. What does that mean? Your master has a penchant for meddling each time a body appears in Tassing. I didn't mean to meddle only to help free Brother Piero from a false accusation. A righteous cause, then. Perhaps. Another individual was killed, uh, nonetheless. Lamentable, but yes. So, Andreas, how was your time abroad as a master, master artist? I learned a great deal while studying in Aragon. Ah, oh, yes, so many new influences from the new world, I'm sure. What a treat. I'd hoped to be more traveled like you, but I'm happy enough in Tassing. If only I could find the right formula, I might be able to create a powerful light from something other than candles. How ingenious. Ha! With ideas like that, you may find yourself the next Leonardo Baltas. That's hardly my aim. Besides, weren't you the one who had planned to leave one of uh, leave for one of the big cities a few years back? Yes, Phil. I have plenty of work in Tassing. True, true. It is good that you were around, around to examine Otto's body. Altus, 
Do you mind we're eating? Yes, Werner, tell us what you surmised from the inspection. Really, Andreas? Such description would be great study for art and invention. We rarely have such an opportunity so far from the city. Surely you don't mind telling us both a little, Doctor? You certainly will not play storyteller to a mountainside Leonardo. Shut up, Werner. You know the townfolk do that to annoy me. Ah, well. There's more than enough to discuss now anyway. You mean the St. John's Eve Festival? Think bigger. Progress, my boy. Progress. The Wheel of Fortune never stops. I believe Baltas is referring to Otto's speeches about the Twelve Articles. Yeah, the laws, uh, the changes this could bring to local laws would be impressive. By Andreas, I'm impressed you know the legalities of the situation. Oh, I'm no expert, but I briefly studied law in university before becoming an artist. Truly, a universal man. Well, I doubt Abbott will be inclined to change anything, even if Peter appeals to the law. Things are the way they are for a reason. How can that be a good thing? It seems so unfair. Natural law, a Christian idea derived from ancient Greek philosophers that the principles of morality and ethics are inherent in the natural world. Natural law dictates that few will ro rule over the many. Many people have elaborated on what the Greeks originally wrote about the subject. Hmm. Anyway, Baltus, how is that absurd contraption of yours coming along? What did you say it was? An automatic plow? It's, uh, I'm making progress, but having trouble generating any interest in it. Power mechanism is a bit finicky. That's all. A bit more time. That's what I need. Say, hey, Andreas, what have you been reading lately? Did Materia Medica, a pharmacopoeia, or book about creating compound medicines written by Pedanius Dioscorides, a Greek physician and botanist who employed who was employed in the Roman army, five volume text of the primary source for botanical information for centuries. Uh, Agricola, first century Roman general, Agricola's command and conquest into Britain was famously written about by Roman historian Tacitus, Tacitus uh, or Tacitus, I think. Dioscorides, a first century botanist and physician. Caspar and I have been going through Agricola's De Inventioni Dialectica. I've heard of Agricola, but never had much taste for traditional log logic myself. His work was common in university. Do you miss your time at school, Andreas? Ha! Uh, yes, I long for the free freedom I had in those days. I've always thought that freedom is a state of mind myself. If you can find it anywhere, as long as we look. Huh. Gaspar, do you have any ambitions for the university? Uh, maybe one day. I'm just happy to learn from Master Andreas for now. You have plenty of time to learn, especially with Andreas as a teacher. Oh dear, speaking of time, I must really be going. Well, Werner, thank you for your wonderful meal and delightful conversation. I'm so pleased you had room for Andreas and Casper as well. Yes, well, thank you for stopping by. It was good to see you, Werner. Of course. I must get back to work now. All right, I think the only person we have the ability to point the finger at is uh, Hannah. May as well, she has motive. She seems sketched out. Uh, I guess Father Thomas as well, but I don't know if that counted as our uh, thing. Can we go eavesdrop on them? On their confessions? So, even if Martin Bauer is a different person than expected, I don't actually want to implicate him because I don't think he was the one that did it. I just, I don't think it was him. Especially because everyone in town would immediately think it was him. And they agreed on things. Like, there is no, there is zero point. Even if Otto was like, I'm gonna... I'm going to reveal to everyone that it was, in fact, you who did it. Like, I don't think 
or that you were not the real Martin. Like, I don't think that, that this Martin would have killed him because they were friends, you know? Willem says, I feel like Werner absolutely hates me. Uh, I don't think he does. I think we're begrudging friends. Good day, Master Maller. Hello, Master Maller. Anything I can do for you? Yes, actually. Well, Martin caused quite the fight the other night. Does he start fights often? No, not usually. I heard he used to be quite the troublemaker, but he's been kind to Nico and me. Agnes had to bring Kat back around when he came back. She fell into a dead faint. He was a known thief while I was here years ago. Well, he may be rough at times, but he's never stolen from the inn as far as I know. And I keep a sharp eye. Interesting. Thank you, Hannah. Anything else, Master Mahler? Nope. Good day, Andreas. Let's just sleep until tomorrow. Let's. I'm gonna blame her. I think. I think it's probably her, I guess. Getting late. I should get some rest. <sighs> I really feel like Father Thomas did it, but... Because he has motive to want the Abbey and the town to get along. And he, he rather to make the peasants fear the Abbey. Andreas, get up. Wake your boy, too. Why? What's happened now? We're finishing this. You're needed in the commons now. Let's go. We'll be asking the questions, Mahler. All right, all right. We'll get dressed and be along. Asper, wake up. Master Andreas? What's going on? It's the middle of the night. Something's happening in the commons. Peter and the others want us there. Will we be all right, Master Andreas? Peter seems upset, but we should be fine, I think. All right, now that everyone's here, we can start. Start? Start what? We're holding a trial for Otto's murderer. You're the one with the evidence. So you decided a Vemic court is the best way to handle this? This isn't Westphalia. A duchy of the Holy Roman Empire located northwest of the center of the empire. It is ruled by the Archbishop of Cologne, one of the most powerful prince electors in the empire. Also called a silent court or courts of punishment, these Westphalian courts overseen by lay judges who can pronounce and execute capital punishment on behalf of the emperor. They have a dark reputation for vigilantism. Bill Bavaria don't have the authority to pass blood justice. And why not, Mahler? We must have means of exacting justice. Well, what have you found? We're all waiting. Hold on, I've barely had a day to investigate. I can hardly come to a conclusion so soon. Answer the man! Well, you'd better fucking decide, Mahler. You can watch that damned Abbey go up in flames. Be quiet. I have a woman in labor right next door. This behavior is shameful. If she loses her child because of this fighting, it will be on your souls. Agnes is right. I know you want justice for my husband, for your friend, but I don't want things to get worse than they already are. Please, Dad, give Andreas a little more time. Fine. Andreas, you have until that baby is born. After that, we'll claim our justice. Ugh. Good evening. Is it customary in Tassing that the people gather in the commons in the middle of the night? We do what needs to be done when it needs to be done. Who's asking? My name is Tristan von Franberg. I'm here on behalf of the Duke of Bavaria. The Duke is aware that you have been distributing and discussing the Twelve Articles. He is also aware that you have been disputing conditions of taxation and land use with the Abbot of Kirsau. The Duke is merciful. He does not seek to punish Tassing for these disputes. 
but his mercy has limits. The Duke has become aware that you have imprisoned the abbot and monks of Kirsau within the abbey. This is insult. This is rebellion. For this, there can be neither tolerance nor mercy. You have until sunset tomorrow to vacate Kirsau Abbey and release the abbot and all monks. If this is not done, the Duke's soldiers will enter the town and abbey in force. As certain as night follows day, they will kill every man and boy who stands in their way. What? We never wanted to threaten the abbot, sir. He wouldn't listen to our demands. We're starving. Such efforts were necessary since the townsfolk are also suffering under the abbot's increased taxes. The duke is aware of the town's complaints and finds some merit in them. He believes some concessions can be made regarding the death tax and use of the forest for wood. Of course, of course, only under the strict condition the abbot is released unharmed. And what do the peasants get? What about our taxes? What about the right to use the woods for grazing, for fishing? The duke is unwilling to make additional concessions. You can release the abbot and take what is offered for you or remain defiant and face the consequences. It will yield you little save steel and fire. Sunset tomorrow. Okay, so we have more information than before. Hello, Master Mahler. Anything I can do for you? That was some fight, wasn't it? Yes, I'm glad it didn't get too out of hand. Samuel was helpful if expensive guests to have on hand. No matter how, fights aren't common in Tassing, but I suppose it was just a matter of time. With Otto's death and all the revolts about everyone's on edge, especially pilgrims. Everyone seems to have an opinion about that. They were pretty vocal against Otto the other day. What was that about? Just what I said then. I don't want anyone to get hurt, especially now. We've already had one death in Tassing. We don't need any more. Again, we had the same things. I feel for the peasants, truly, but their coin won't keep our doors open. My husband and I need to make a living. The Golden Hand relies on pilgrims and travelers for its business, Andreas. If Otto got his way, everything would be chaos. Swabia is burning as it is. We need a lot to live civilized lives. Fabian mentioned you la uh, spend a lot of time at the Rot House. Odd, given that Otto was crushed by the construction equipment. Andreas. Yeah, it's just the same thing. Besides, do you patrol the roads in Tassing? We must all report to you what we're going and why. Unless there's anything more you need, I won't abide by this foolishness. Good day, Andreas. We're doing poorly with everyone. I don't know where to go. I don't know what to do. Hello again, Andreas. Is there something you needed? I told me Wolf passed. I wanted to give my condolences. Oh, thank you. It's... I try not to think about it. Cat wants to talk to, about him all the time, you know. Any night there's clear skies, she looks up and asks if I ever wonder how he is up there. That must be excruciating. Yes, yes it is. I'm sorry, Andreas. I can't talk about this anymore. Sorry I brought him up, Brigitta. You didn't know. It's all right. It's been good to see you again, but I should be going until later. Uh, oh, you know what? I can probably go talk to the miller. Is Father Thomas in here? I wanted to eavesdrop on the confessional. I just held X to run again. Uh, I wanted to eavesdrop on confessional, but... Oh, Andreas, I don't suppose you've come for our local St. John's Day confession. I have to give priority to the locals, of course, but if you want to wait a few hours, I can hear you. You don't have to, of course, but I would be remiss if I didn't offer. In fact, that sounds just fine to me. Oh, good. It may take a while to get through everyone, but you're welcome to stay and pray.
bless you. The Lord be with you. I confess to God and blessed Mary ever virgin, to blessed Michael the archangel, and blessed John the Baptist, and to the holy apostles Peter and Paul, to blessed Lutherius and uh... Cassian. Cassian and blessed Juvenal, along with the saints and you, Father, through my fault, through my fault, through my fault. What is it you have come to confess, Paul? I disobeyed my father to go down to the ruins to draw. How many times? Three. You must have known it was wrong every time. Why'd you keep doing it? I don't know. I just think it's a stupid rule. He's right. It is stupid. You're not wrong. Is there anything else, Paul? I had impure thoughts about a girl. How many times? Uh, I don't think I can remember a lot. All right, anything else? Well, Father, I need to say it quietly. That's fine, Paul. Casper, go light a candle. I saw my father with a woman at the ruins. They were having carnal relations. That's a serious matter, Paul, but you're not here to tell me the sins of others. If they want to confess, they know where to find me. All right, Father. Obey your father. Avoid the temptation to think about girls. Christ wants us to live in harmony with our family. You cannot be in harmony if you are disobedient to your parents. And if you find yourself thinking about girls, pray to the Blessed Virgin for strength. Yes, Father. Father Thomas. What is it, Paul? Are we going to be all right? I mean, the soldiers. I don't know what's going to happen, Paul, but I do know that we are saved. Trust in that. Trust in God. All right, I will, Father. For your penance, say five Hail Marys and two Our Fathers. Yes, Father. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you and I, by his authority, absolve you from every bond of excommunication and interdict in as much as I am able and you require. Thereupon I absolve you from your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Uh, what did he say? Paul saw his father with a woman at the Roman ruins. Interesting. What have you come to confess, Gret? Well, Father, I argued with my husband about his support of the peasants. Ulrich is the head of your household. Oh, wrong. I thought it was a woman speaking. Ulrich is the head of your household, but it's not sinful for you to disagree about things. It's a serious matter. The peasants are trying to change the way things have been. When people try to change a place's way of life, they are playing with fire, with sin. Is Ulrich's soul in danger? I know Ulrich is a good Christian, but I worry that the peasants will become violent. I thought Otto's death might shock the peasants into abandoning their cause, but it only inflamed them. Oh God, poor Otto! Master Andreas, do you think Gret could have killed Otto? She was at the scene right when we arrived, and she was still in her costume. We saw what was almost certainly the killer pass us in the woods. It's not possible for her to have been in both places at once. That's right! You're so smart, Master Andreas. Shh, shh. It's all right, Gret. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have said anything. I'm here to listen to your confession. No, no, Father, thank you. I appreciate it. Of course. Now remember what I said about the difference between disagreeing and disobeying. Yes, Father. Jesus wants our families to be in harmony, but there is room for disagreement, especially on something so important. Now, for your penance, say two Hail Mary Marys and our Father. Thank you, Father, I will. That wasn't helpful at all. Is anyone going to convince, confess something good? It would be just your luck if the killer had no conscience about this whatsoever. What have you to come to confess, Anna? 
This will be a waste of time. Maybe, maybe not. Father, I stole things from people during St. John's Eve. How did you do that? I waited until the bonfire and then I went out and just took things when people weren't looking. It's a serious sin, Anna. What did you steal and from whom? A candle from Agnes's house. I also took a cup from Johann Bauer's house. And a letter from Martin Bauer's house. A letter? Why, I haven't even taught you to read yet. I don't know, it just looks fancy and the ink was a pretty color. See, this is dumb. Well, Anna, you have to return them, all of them, and you have to apologize to the people you stole from. Apologize? Can't I return them in secret? They probably don't even know they're gone. No? And if you keep this up, you're going to wind up like Martin Bauer did. Martin found God and his family again, but not every wayward child's story ends as happily as that of the prodigal son. I'm sorry, Father. Apologize to God and the people you stole from. Yes, Father. In addition to penance, say five Hail Marys and five Our Fathers. Yes, Father. So now we know Martin Bauer had a note. But if you come to confess, you were just here for Easter, don't tell me. Well, Father, I laid with my late brother's wife on St. John's Eve. What? This is the third year in a row. Father, please keep your voice down. I can't hear them, can you? Another missed opportunity. Oh well. Sorry, Master Andreas. Maybe the next one will go better. Andreas, it's your turn. Alright, Father. Just wait here, Casper. Yes, Master. I let him... I just let him off the hook. I don't think he murdered anyone if he was busy banging. <laughs> Do you mind if we moved right to the confession part, Father? It's been a long day. I think God will understand, but make it a good confession. Now then, what would you like to confess, Andreas? Is the love of money still a sin? It's the root of all evil, but yes, greed is a sin. There is a great appetite in Aragon for the art in Flemish style. Mine was close enough to earn me a fortune. You did work, and you were paid for it. Why does your success burden you? Riches were the only satisfaction I took from the work. Portraits, altarpieces, religious artwork with the client's families placed prominently in the corner. All pomp and vanity, monuments to the powerful as they wanted to be seen. It seems that wealth and fame are not as nourishing as you might have hoped. I'm lost, Father. You must not lose hope, Andreas. Look for God in your heart and you will find him. It grieves me to hear that you're in pain, and this pain is leading you to error. I cannot know what course will lead you to happiness, but God does. When you return to Nuremberg, seek counsel from your wife and from your priest. Yes, Father. For penance, say three Hail Marys and two Our Fathers. And when you feel despair, remember that hopelessness is among the gravest sins against God. It offends him, because no matter how dire things may seem, there is always salvation through Christ's sacrifice. Yes, Father. God bless you, Andreas. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to prepare for dinner. Until later, Father. Well, I may as well do my penance now. I'm not going to read these out loud. How many did he say? We did our penance. I hope Casper isn't too bored waiting. Casper, wake up. Andreas! Oh no, that's Amelie. Andreas. 
Sister Amelie, are you all right? I'm fine. My body pains me, but my spirit soars. I suppose the spirit is the more important part. Always. You were listening to their confessions, weren't you? Uh... Yes, I was hoping to learn something about Otto Zimmerman's murder. Many tell their confessors that which they wouldn't speak to their closest loved ones. Did you hear something we missed? Sounded like a waste of time to me. Not today, but I did hear something else confessing in here the other day. Brother Guy came here to confess to Father Thomas. Oh, right, after he was talking to us. Interesting. Brother Guy wanted to confess to Father Thomas for two reasons. First, he was confessing about stealing money from the Abbey. Well, I can see why he wouldn't want to confess that to the Abbot. Second, he knew Father Thomas was becoming suspicious of his role in managing the Abbey's money. If Brother Guy confessed to him, Father Thomas would be bound to secrecy by the seal of confession. Despicable. He also said Otto Zimmerman confronted him about the Abbey's finances when he was doing repairs. Otto saw Brother Guy writing in a Abbey's ledger and demanded to see it. Otto said he'd prove the Abbey was hoarding money one way or another. That doesn't sound good. Sounds like Guy had motive to see Otto dead. Why are you telling us this, Sister Amelie? I am just a woman, dead to the world, abiding in this cell, but I still have eyes that see and ears that hear. Brother Guy has abused the trust of Father Guerneau and Father Thomas both. And in so doing, he has profaned the sacrament of confession to shield himself from justice. This is the least I could do. I must pray now. God be with you both. I... don't know. I don't know if it was Guy. Because the guy is too small for the costume. Ren says, well, a new better suspect than Tavern Lady, but that helps Father Thomas. So that's the thing, is that I don't know if it's a better suspect than the Tavern Lady, because it's possible that the Tavern Lady worked with, with her husband, who was also a big guy in a costume. So, or not in a costume, but a big guy. So, well, what should we do now, Master? We need to find the ledger and evidence of Guy's misdeeds. Because if Otto forced the abbot to review their ledger, the abbot would realize that Guy was stealing money from the abbey. Exactly. He had motive to silence Otto permanently. We just have to search the abbey until we find it. It's possible some of the brothers and sisters may be able to assist us as well. I don't know. I actually don't think it's Guy. <laughs> 